What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we will be setting up Laravel's debug bar. If you want to help the channel out with the content I create, now head down to Patreon where you get benefits such as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues and other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link will be in the description down below. There are some extensions in Visual Studio Code that allows you to set up a debug bar in PHP. There is a package available in Laravel called PHP Debug Bar, which includes a service provider to register a debug bar in the browser. A developer called Barry van der Heuvel developed a package called Laravel Debug Bar, which allows you to quickly debug your application during development inside the browser. In this video, we will be setting it up and we will be testing out some powerful features of it. We've used the term packages a couple times in this course. And a package is simply a way of adding functionality to your Laravel application that another developer created for us. In the next video, we will be going over our project directory where I'll show you in depth what happens behind the scenes when you install a Laravel package. In most cases, a package will be added through the command line interface. Visual Studio Code has an integrated command line interface that you can open by opening the terminal tab at the top, where you have the option to create a new terminal. You can use this terminal. I'll be using my external terminal since I can make the text a little bit bigger. If I try to do that in Visual Studio Code, the code text will also grow, which is kind of annoying. So let me close it off. All right. In order to install Laravel's debug bar, you have to perform the composer require Barry VDH forward slash Laravel dash debug bar command. We're not done yet, since you don't want the debug bar to be visible once you deploy your Laravel application. You only want to see it in development mode. For that, you can add a flag to it called space double dash dev, which means that it's only visible in development mode. If we hit enter, it's pulling the package in right now. All right, let's navigate back to the browser and let me close off Visual Studio Code. Let's refresh our Laravel app and right at the bottom, you'll see that our debug bar has been added. Now let me zoom in. All right. Now let's go over all the tabs that have been added. The first one is message. The message tab is something special since it will only load the facade from within your code. Once you want to log messages in your application, you have to register the facade inside the app.php file. So what you can do is navigate back to Visual Studio Code, Project Directory, and let me close off all the tabs. Open the convic folder and let's go to the app.php file. It's registering the package that we'd like to use as a provider. So we need to scroll down to our provider. Where is it? Right here. So right above the odd service provider, let's add a new line where we're going to say, well, we have Barry VDH backslash debug bar backslash service provider colon colon class comma. What we could do next is outputting messages inside our debug bar. So let's do that. Let's go back to our web.php file in the root of our directory inside our routes folder and right above our return view welcome. We need to make sure that we send back a message before we render our view. Where we need to write down debug bar. As you could see, we have a use statement right here. So if we hit enter, it will pull it in, colon, colon. Now there are four types of messages that we can add. The first one is info, which accepts a string. So let's add single quotes inside the parentheses where we can print out, let's say info. If we save it and navigate back to the browser, refresh it, you'll see that info has been printed out with an eye icon of info. Now next to info, you can also print out errors. And what we need to do is replacing info with error. Save it, navigate back, refresh it. As you could see, the text is red with an X icon. We can also print out warnings. And once again, we need to replace error with warning. Save it, navigate back you see an explanation mark with a yellow text. And the last one is add message, which simply outputs a message. Let's test it out. And as you can see, info has been printed out again. Now the second tab is the timeline tab. And this is pretty fun to use when you want to track how long it takes for each request. And it also shows you how much time it takes to boot your application. So let me quickly show you an example. Let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code and let's replace add message with start measure. 
we got to pass in two strings inside the start measure method. So let's remove info and let's say woohoo, comma, another string. And let's say rendering our first message. If we save it and navigate back to the browser, refresh it, you'll see that our application has been booted in 13 milliseconds and just four seconds to load our message that we're printing out inside the start measure method. The next available tab is our exceptions logger, right here, where you can simply log exceptions to debug your application. So let's add one. Let's navigate back. Let's remove the entire debug bar. And right here, let's define a try where we will throw a new exception of a string, let's say try message. And right after the closing curly brace, we need to add a catch, which accepts a parameter of exception dollar sign E. Then inside our catch, we can call our debug bar facade, colon colon, and chain the add exception method to it. Inside the add exception method, we're going to pass in our dollar sign E. If we save it and navigate back to the browser, refresh it, you'll see that our exception has one message where it's trying to perform the try message that we added. So try message explanation mark. The few tasks will show you all templates that have been rendered. At the moment, it's one, which is the welcome.blades.php file. A pretty cool feature that the view tabs has is the fact that it also includes parameters. At the moment, we have none. So let's quickly define one. Let's navigate back to our code editor and let's remove our try catch. And let's create a new variable called dollar sign name, which is equal to code with diary. The view method accepts a second parameter. So let's add a comma. And what we want to pass in right here is an array. And let's hit enter. We're sending back a key value pair right here, where the key will be the name, while the value will be our variable name. If we save it and navigate back to the browser, refresh it, click on our welcome.blade.php file, and right here, you'll see that it has one parameter called name. Then we got our routes tab, which will show you everything that is related to the route that is being called. So we got our URI, which is a get method to the forward slash endpoint. We have the middleware, we have the use statements, the namespace, prefix, where, and the line where our route is being called, which is the web.php file on line 19 to 25. The most important tab is probably the queries tab, where you will see the queries that are being performed on your route. One thing to keep in mind is the fact that it also shows you how long it takes for a query to be fully loaded, which is a pretty good thing for a developer because you can see whether it's too long or not. If it is, you can make adjustments inside your code since it will also take a long time in production. Now the models tab will show you all the associated models. At the moment, we obviously have none. Gate is a tab that we won't be using. But the sessions one is actually pretty important because it will show you the CSRF token. It will show you the previous route, which is, well, basically a Laravel app.test endpoint. You can see flash messages and your stack data. Now the request tab is also pretty useful since it will show you everything related to your request. Think about the endpoint, status code, text, and even the content type. Now on the right hand side, you will also find some icons which can be pretty useful. The first one is the route, which is the forward slash endpoint with a get method. Then we got our memory usage, which will be 1 MB. The third one is the request duration, which is close to 28 milliseconds. We have our PHP version, which is 8.1.3. And the last one is the folder icon. Once you click on it, you'll see a pop-up where you will find all the previous endpoints that you have been performed inside this project. This can also be pretty useful once you start working with JavaScript so you can get more information about the request. Now you can also click on the request, so let's do that, where you will be redirected to the request tab with information about that specific request. This was it for this video where we went over the basics of Laravel's debug bar. It is pretty difficult to showcase the actual power of the debug bar in an empty project, but once we proceed further in this course, you will be seeing the power of it. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.